Hello, I'm Kira's dog and I'm here to tell you all about the structure of the NHS. Because I'm a dog, I find life absolutely amazing. I find humans absolutely amazing. And I find food so exciting. Mmm, mmm. There's also something else that I find so fascinating and that is the organisational structure of the NHS. I get so excited about it that I start to chew on it. So I'm here to tell you all about it and hopefully to make Kira excited about it because at the moment she looks sad and confused. So this could get a bit confusing but don't worry I'll keep showing you this diagram to explain. So firstly Right at the very tip top of that diagram, we have the Department of Health. That's the D-O-H, which nearly spells dog, which is exceptionally exciting. But anyway, the Department of Health is a branch of UK government that is responsible for health and social care policies. This means that they are also responsible for the funding for the health care provision too. The person in charge of the Department of Health is called the Secretary of State for Health and he is the overall responsible person for the work that they do. I hear there's a guy called Jeremy is in charge. I have a friend called Jeremy, but I don't think that this is him. He tastes very nice though. So let's go back to this amazing diagram. At the top you can see the Department of Health. There are then three sections below which the Department of Health is in charge of. Commissioning, Monitoring and Training. This is where I get a bit confused, but I still find it really exciting. I'm so excited that I really need to run around. I'm going to talk about the commissioning section now, but first I need to explain what commissioning actually is. Basically, commissioning is the process that plans and provides services to the population. They do this according to the needs of the population. There are three main bodies involved in commissioning and they are Clinical Commissioning Groups, NHS England and Public Health England. NHS England oversees the running of Clinical Commissioning Groups and also allocates them their resources. They also commission primary care and specialist services too. Clinical Commission Groups, which are under the eyes of the NHS England, consist of GPs and other clinicians from their local area. There are 211 of these groups currently and they decide how best to spend their budget. These groups can commission any service provider as long as it meets the NHS standard and costs. These can be hospitals, charities or other service providers. Both clinical commissioning groups and NHS England have a duty to include their patients and the public when making decisions about the services that they commission. And then, under this, is all the healthcare services that are provided to the people. The groups involved in commissioning all decide in some way how these healthcare services are implemented. So, the commissioning section is a bit like shop managers who decide what food to put in their shops for the people to choose from. The food that shops want to provide might be different depending on the area. Perhaps somewhere in Wales would sell more lamb and a shop in student cities might sell more beer. Apparently, Dogs should only drink water. I think it's because I've heard that beer makes people crazy, and dogs are already crazy anyway. For example, I have now stolen the NHS banner from Kira because I was so excited about it, and I don't think that she's very happy. Dogs certainly do not need beer to have fun, or to get excited about the NHS. Anyway, so the commissioning people are like the shop managers. And then the service provider is like the cashier people, who allow people to buy the food that they want. Kira goes to the shop and buys me the food that I want. Mmm, yummy, a stick. This next section is the monitoring section. This section is also under the authority of the Department of Health. These organisations are a group of people that report back to the Department of Health or government when things aren't up to the standard or there needs to be change. For example, Healthwatch England is an organisation which makes sure consumers' voices are heard by the people who make the decisions, such as the Department of Health and the Clinical Commissioning Groups. They report back to the government every year. They can also ask the Care Quality Commission to take action if they have any concerns. The Care Quality Commission sets national standards of safety and quality, and services are regulated and monitored 
to ensure that these standards are met. The Care Quality Commission has the power to fine, prosecute or shut down centres that do not meet appropriate standards and all NHS trusts must be registered with them and have regular visits. Phew! Exciting stuff, right? If you're not excited yet, then join me in having some fun. Whoopee! We have one more bit to go. Education! This section basically involves making sure the healthcare workforce is big enough and good enough. Health Education England is in charge and oversees training boards. It ensures that enough people are being trained in the correct way to maintain quality healthcare throughout the NHS. It is constantly aware that the demographics of the country might change as well as the population's needs and the technological advances that could change the clinical practice. So there we have it! I'm still excited. Are you? I'll explain again quickly, just in case you're not as excited as I am. So here, on the top spot, the most fancy chair, we have the Department of Health, and I've put Jeremy on it to represent the Secretary of State for Health, overlooking everything. Then there's all the commissioning, NHS England, clinical commissioning groups and others, deciding what services to provide and fund for each area of the country. And below them, we have all the healthcare services like hospitals, clinics, local departments and charities. Over here, we have monitoring and regulation, and that's the Health Watch England, Care Quality Commission and others. They report back to the Department of Health, ensuring quality care and safety. And finally over here, we have education, providing a stable, competent workforce for the future of the NHS. I'd like to finish by saying, be more dog! Get excited about NHS structure.